James has asked for testimonies for Sunday evening next week. Uh, so if anybody would like to do a testimony, please speak to me, myself or James um, over this weekend if you can. We're going to bring the, begin this service with uh, a reading from Luke's Gospel and Elizabeth is going to come and read it to us. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And a happy Christmas to each and every one of you. Happy Christmas to you too. Thank you. <laughs> when our Saviour Kate was born and came into this world, there was no room for him at the end. Well, my prayer is there is room for him in all your hearts this morning. I trust that you're awake bright and early and if not this should wake you up. <laughs> Christians awake salute the happy moor. A tune with a good name, Yorkshire. <laughs>
us pray. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we come this morning in the name of Jesus, gathering on this glorious day, not glorious because of the weather, not glorious for any, any reason, but the fact that this day commemorates the coming into the world of Jesus Christ. God our Saviour, God taking on human form, taking on human flesh, coming, coming to us, your gift, your gift of love that would open the door for us to come to you. And Father, as we gather in that precious name of Jesus, so we're filled with wonder with the second person of the Godhead infinite all powerful greater than we could ever conceive confined himself to being one of us for 33 years Father we wonder at your greatness we marvel at your love because you are God in all perfection, all glory, all majesty. And yet Jesus chose to come into this world with all its pettiness, its pain. And yet he came displaying your love, bringing us your salvation, opening the gate of heaven. And Father, on this day we ask that you would open our eyes afresh, that we might have a deeper understanding of what that means, of all that this celebrates. And as we come into your presence, into the presence of one who is not just holy, but three times holy. So we recognize that we're not perfect, that we have thought, said, and done things that we shouldn't. And so as we come, we would have nothing to get in the way of us meeting with you this morning. So as we come, we come confessing our sins to you. Confessing because we know that you forgive. Confessing because you're faithful to your every promise. And we ask that you would receive our worship this morning. Through Jesus. Amen. Amen. And let's say the Lord's Prayer together. The pattern of prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I just realised I haven't put this thing on. Christmas Day, so I, I like to be nosy. Why should I change my ways? <laughs> so, I like to find out what you've had for Christmas. And if you've been here or received our newsletter, you will have heard me asking, 
you to bring a present in. So has anybody brought a present to show us? Ah, wonderful. Go on, Michael, what you've got? A nice pair of gloves. Oh, and they look like thermal ones. So he will have warm hands. And I shall have a warm neck. And I shall have a warm neck. And a, a, a nice tartan scarf. That's good. Anybody else? Right, well, has, has, has anybody opened them and not brought one? What, 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 what have you had? Two things, hot from lots of sweets. I had a leather mobile phone case. Wow. And a lovely book on heaven. That's very appropriate, that's nice. Anybody else? Marion. I've got a fantastic foot massager. <laughs> well, you're going to be well relaxed then. <laughs> Did I see another hand? Margaret. Chris and I met 60 years ago, and we're still together. And here's my gift this Oh, oh that's wonderful. <laughs> that's a good anniversary. <laughs> well, we haven't opened our presents yet. So I thought I'd bring you an old one. And this is a very old one. I've received this, I think, 47 years ago, when I was about, when I was about six, so... And I, when, I, when, I was, when I received that and opened that, I thought this was wonderful. I think we, we'd just been, we'd, that year we'd been to stay with my great aunt and uncle da, down in Worcester Park in London, and we'd been to Heathrow Airport, and... I was fascinated by aeroplanes. So my parents bought me a Boeing 707. And it might look a bit bashed now, but it still works. The engines flash, and it makes a lot of noise, so I didn't think I would put batteries in it this morning. But 47 years ago, that delighted me on Christmas morning. Well, I'm obviously not six, six or seven anymore. I'm somewhat older. And perhaps the gift of a Boeing 707 that goes along the floor and makes a lot of noise wouldn't be quite the appropriate gift for a man in his 50s. Unless, of course, he's going into his second childhood. <laughs> now, the presents we've got, the sweets will get eaten. The gloves, well, if you're like me, one will probably get lost. <laughs> The scarf will wear out, and in a few years, these things that delight us now won't have quite the same glory about them. We might be grateful of the memory, but they won't mean quite the same. Well, today, we celebrate the greatest gift of all, God's gift of himself, because that's who Jesus is. Jesus is the second person of the Godhead. And he, he, and he, he came and offered himself to us. And that's the celebration of today. And it's a celebration that several, in several months' time we'll celebrate Easter. Because that's the reason for the gift. That Jesus came to give himself to reconcile us to God. Our other gifts might lose their lustre, but this one gift will never lose its wonder, its effect, effect its glory. And if, it ever do, if he ever does, the problem's not with him, it's with you. So we, give, we gather to give thanks to God. And I'll put this out the way. We're going to sing again a hymn that invites us to offer Jesus the greatest gift that we can give. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan. And I trust your hearts aren't hard this morning. Let's stand and worship our Saviour.
lovely words written by Christina Rossetti. The reading is taken from the book of Titus in the New Testament. Titus chapter 3, reading from verse 4. But when the kindness and love of God our Saviour appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we've done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Saviour, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word, which is a gift to us, in which you are revealed. Father, we ask that you would speak to us through it this morning. Enable me to speak and all of us to receive, not the words of a man, but what you would have to say to us. So we invite you to have your way among us today. Through Jesus, whose birth we celebrate. Amen. Amen. Don't worry, it's not, it's not a sermon, it's a thought. <laughs> well, the passage that I read from Titus 3 isn't one that's often read at Christmas. But really, it sums up what happened in Bethlehem all those years ago. The birth of Jesus is the appearance of the kindness and the love of God to us. Because in Jesus, the kindness and love of God is embodied. In Jesus, God draws alongside us, not in all his majesty and terrifying holiness, but in human form, in vulnerability and in gentleness, born as one of us, like us, born in weakness as a baby. With the birth of Jesus, the kindness and love of God appears to us because Jesus is God our Saviour, God who came to save us, who came in mercy to bring us forgiveness, to give us life. And in the verse that precedes this passage, Paul writes, at one time we too like the rest of humanity, were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions. Foolish, because we were going our own way and without God. <coughs> we knew no different, but in love and mercy, God, our Saviour, came to find us and bring us back to himself. Now we like to be generous in our giving. Presents that we give, we like to give them generously. But God surpasses it all. Because in Jesus, God gives us himself. Through the baby born in Bethlehem, God comes to us. That baby grew up and shared our loss, our lot. Growing up just as we did, becoming a man, and ultimately submitting himself to death on a cross, out of love for you and for me. Through him, we know God's forgiveness. Through him, we are reconciled to God. Through him, we have life and begin to experience life as it should be, knowing God for ourselves. And this is the reason that we celebrate. 
We may not know the exact date of Jesus' birth, but the appearance of the kindness and love of God to us, to you and to me, really is something that's worth celebrating. Let's pray. Father, we thank you because in Jesus, the kindness and love of God, of you, comes to us. Father, we thank you. And we would ask that you would open our eyes and hearts that we might understand that a little. Father, we thank you for the gift of love that we have in Jesus. Grant us the grace to accept that gift and to experience that love. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Through Jesus. Amen. Now I'm going to inflict on you my favourite carol. Another one written by Christina Rossetti. Love came down at Christmas. Love, all oh lovely, love divine. Love was born at Christmas. Let's stand and celebrate that gift of love, God's kindness and love. for all those for whom today is just a day of celebration without really understanding the reason why. We pray for each home in Britain where Jesus is not Lord. We ask, Father, that you would open their eyes that they might see your love that was expressed to them in Jesus that love that has been streaming out to them every day of their lives. Father, we ask that you would open their hearts, that they might be drawn to you and truly have something to celebrate. Generous God, you who are supremely generous, for not only did you give us life, not only did you give us breath, but you gave us Jesus. And Father, we recognise that in this country there are many for whom Christmas will not be a day of great celebration. Father, we pray for those who've been bereaved, those for whom Christmas marks 
an aching void. Father, we ask that you would draw close, that you would bring your peace and your healing. And Father, we ask that you would touch the hearts of your people, that we might reach out, that we might bring comfort ourselves. We pray for those who are on their own this Christmas, those for whom Christmas shouts isolation and loneliness. Father, we pray that you would draw close to each one, that you would touch their hearts, that all might know that we're with you, knowing you, we're never alone. And likewise, Father, we pray for your people, for all of us, that you would open our hearts, that we might show the same love that you have shown us towards them. <coughs> we pray for those, th th those who are experiencing conflict, for Christmas often causes causes people to open old wounds. And Father, we pray for each and every home where that's happening. And more than that, Father, we pray again that you would draw close to them. For Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And only in him can we truly know what peace is. Father, we pray that you would bring peace into those homes. And most importantly, we ask that you would draw them to the Prince of Peace. Once again, Father, we pray for ourselves that we might be peacemakers. Not that we broke a peace, but that we offer Jesus to all who will listen. And so, Father, we we bring to you now those people and those situations that are on our own hearts and in the silence we bring them to you. And finally, Father, we we bring to you this, this pandemic that remains. And Father, we ask that in the, in the name of Jesus, you will eradicate it from this earth. Father, we pray that it will have an effect and that it will cause people to realize their mortality and be drawn to seek you. And so Father, we bring to you all our prayers, the spoken and the unspoken bringing them in gratitude, for we know that you have heard, and we know that you will answer. So Father, receive our thanks and our praise, through Jesus. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> now I had, brought a I had bought a box of sweets to, get to give you as a, as a little gift from me. Now, but unfortunately, it's sitting in the dining room at home. <laughs> So if you're here tomorrow, we'll make up when we've got.